Hey people, D-Roy Cruz, your life applications officer. Um, I want to do a quick video. I'm not going to hold you long at all. Um, I was watching some YouTube videos today. Some that I already watched in the recent... Uh, in the recent past, like just a f week or so ago, and I was watching those over again, and I was watching uh, some new ones that I haven't watched yet. And again, all the New King James people, stand up. Okay? Um, stop hiding. You know, all the New King James people... You can stand up and stop hiding, okay? You don't have to be ashamed for being a New King James lover. People that are, a lot of people that are into the King James will rail you and spank you for being New King James. Um, you know, you'll get more criticism for being New King James than you will being NIV or uh, anything of that nature that's Alexandrian. Um, as well as people from... People that are into the Alexandrian Bibles, you know, the NIV and all its companions, all its cousins, okay? Um, these people will also d reject the New King James. They, they will, they will, they will tell you to read the New King James. Don't read the King James, they'll tell you. Read the New King James. But they won't read it. They don't own one. See what I'm saying? And there's a lot of hatred. You can say what you want to say. You can pick on King James only people. And King James only people do get cultic, and most, as I said before, King James-only people do not know how to read their King James. New King... Let me, let me rephrase that. King James, old King James, 1611 King James people do, know, do not know how to read their King James. Most of them. Over half of them. Okay, and one of the reasons why they get upset with other translations is because when you read the King James, you translate as you read, which is one of the reasons why I rather read the New King James. But you cannot read a King James without translating as you read. You are the translator. You're translating the Bible as you read it. In order so for you to understand it, okay, the translation methods necessarily aren't there like they are in these other texts, these other Bibles, okay. King James, if, if you've been watching, let me clue you in on how I feel about the King James. The King James is superior. It is the superior word of God. Why? Because it was one of the best Bibles we ever had. And it was um, after that, first of all, as I said in other videos, let me say real quickly, the King James is superior because no other Bible, other than the Texas Receptus versions, like the King James, not all Texas Receptus versions, but the King James, and the Bibles before it that were Texas Receptus, okay, were the first English Bibles that built the church here in America. Okay? They were the first English Bibles. And then the Alexandrian Bibles came afterwards claiming that they got a hold of older texts and these older texts were better. Which still has yet to be proven and it's not proven. This Bible right here Okay, and a lot of King James only people fail to read it. They just assume what's in here. I listened to a guy today talk about this Bible. He was wrong. That's not what it says. 
Okay? He just assumed because he don't under even understand that this comes from the Texas Receptus. Okay? He didn't even know that. He claimed, you know, it's no, no, no. It comes from the Texas Receptus. And if you read it, you'll understand that it 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 defends the King James, and as I did another video not too long ago, even the footnotes defend the Texas Receptus in the footnotes. A lot of them will say, "Well, it's a it's a it's a dirty Bible. It's it's a, it's a it's a heretic Bible because it's got footnotes in it." The footnotes in this New King James are not the same footnotes that are in the NIV. The footnotes that are in here defend the Texas Receptus, defend the King James. Okay, enough said. I gotta move on now. Um, if you are someone that's getting into the New King James, hold on. If you are someone that's getting into the New King James. This should be your first Bible. Right here. This should be your first Bible. Okay? Not because New King James is hard to read or hard to understand, because it's not. Okay? What a, you know, you read it just like you read any other Bible. You, you pick up a dictionary. And you read, and if you come across a hard word, you look it up in a dictionary. thing about this, you can look it up in a regular Webster's dictionary. Okay? And the answer will be there. It ain't got to necessarily be a Bible dictionary. It can be a Webster's dictionary. That's the difference. Okay? Um, all, the diction all the words in here that are hard are in your Webster's dictionary. Okay? Um, but... Do I believe that this is the... Do I believe that you can throw your King James away just because you got this? Not really. Not necessarily. Um, I still have... I still believe that the King James is superior. And I believe that even if you put the King James in a museum or put it in your archives. <laughs> okay. You know, you should still should have a King James because that is the one that brought revival to the church. That is the, you know, before all this Alexandrian nonsense. Now, you want to defend the Alexandrian Bibles, but what was going on before the Alexandrian Bibles? Did we have a Bible? Did we, did, did we have revival going on in the church? Yes, we did. The King James, I got one in my library there, brought revival to the church and the Bibles before that, where Christians were burned at the stake for that Bible, the Tyndale as well. Texas Receptus. Okay, these people were burned at the stake. Nobody was burned at the stake for 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 the NIV. Or the NASB. Nobody was burned at the stake for those Bibles. But the Texas Receptus, King James, the Bishop's Bible, the Geneva Bible... The Tyndale Bible, people were burned at the stake for those Bibles. Okay? Um, New King James, I think the New King James translators did a good job on this translation. I really do. I believe that with all my heart. When I read it and I understand it, I, I, I believe that the New King James people, the translators, did a good job. On the New King James. Now, if you are getting into the New King James and you're just now getting into the New King James as a new believer, this should be your first Bible. This, this NKJV is strictly for the New King James. It was created by the New King James, um, created by Nelson for the New King James. This New King James Study Bible by Thomas Nelson. Okay. There's only one. And it is the best study Bible ever. Um, I was comparing it with my spiritual life Bible. Now the spiritual life Bible 
tends to be somewhat Pentecostal. I'm Pentecostal, but I don't believe that my Bible should be Pentecostal because the Pentecostal church did not write the Bible. Okay? Um, so when I go in here and they want to throw Pentecostal excerpts of things that happened that didn't really happen because of the canon of Scripture, okay, I kind of like, kind of like back off of that a little bit, okay? Um, even though I'm Pentecostal myself, I don't believe your Bible is supposed to be Pentecostal. It's supposed to be uh, the infallible Word of God, okay? Um, so, if you are, and, and the difference is, this New King James uh, Study Bible here, this New King James Study Bible by Nelson Publishers that I have, um, it's not theological. It's not denominational, I, I, I would say. But it's a it, what it is is it's it it's theological it's biblical theological not denominational theological like this one might be. Here's my spiritual life Bible. A lot of the stuff in here um, is Pentecostal, whereas this Bible here is more biblical theological. For for example, the Trinity. The, you can't argue the Trinity. The, the, the Trinity is not Baptist or Pentecostal. It is biblical. Okay? It's not Baptist or, the, or, or, or Pentecostal. It's biblical. So this teaches you how to understand the Bible. Okay? And in this Bible, um, you have a lot of annotations. Okay? Almost an annotation for every verse. But in this Bible here, you have an almost... An annotation for almost every verse. But the thing is, this Bible, ex it has more expression in those annotations and explains to you how to connect one thing to another all through the Bible. This Bible here just kind of helps you, you know, understand so you can keep reading and you don't get stuck on one thing, okay? Now, wh the reason why I have this Bible and the main feature in this Bible that I like that this Bible doesn't have is this has the kingdom dynamics which I think are important if you in for your study which everybody that's a believer needs to have the kingdom dynamics in their life. This Bible here doesn't have the kingdom dynamics study in it, but it does have articles and charts in that in it that are cross reference to the kingdom dynamics, okay? Um so you know this is this is a good Bible to just read, and I like in this Bible how it's laid out with every verse, center column, you know, you know, like your typical um, Bible. See, see, I like the way it's laid out. Okay, with the verses right after the other in in um, parallel order. Okay, whereas this Bible, the verses. Like the more, uh, like the newer versions of the Bible, like the Alexandrian Bible, the verses are all over the place. Okay, that's the only setback that I have about this, and the fact that it's not red letter in Christ. All Bibles, in my opinion, should be red letter in Christ, but this isn't. But it's still one of the best Bibles on the market, especially if you are a New King James. So, if you are. New King James. This should be your first Bible. Learn the Bible. Grow, you know, mature in faith and theology. And then, after you've got yourself based in the knowledge of the Word of God, then you should go to Bibles like this if you're Pentecostal, or go to the John MacArthur, or whatever. You know, depending on what denomination you're in or whatever. But your first Bible... This Bible right here, I will always, you know, I was comparing them today. And I realized that they really done a good job on this study Bible. I mean, they really put together some work into this Bible. This Bible here, they put in a lot of work on the kingdom dynamics. Okay. Which I love, and I and I'm studying them right now. I've been reading this Bible, um, getting into the kingdom dynamics, um, but um, 
when you go to studying like the gifts of the Spirit and certain things in the Gospels, this Bible right here gets kind of Pentecostal on you. And it's almost like your Pentecostal opinion, which I'm Pentecostal myself. But I have biblical opinions about things, not Pentecostal opinions about things. So um, you need to understand that a lot of people that advertise this Bible don't don't remind you that this Bible is written by Pentecostal people. And um, um, but this Bible here is strictly for the New King James. And it is so exhaustive. I mean, this Bible is, is exhaustive too. And they both have strong words in it. I think this one has more. But this one has them in order. This one has them according to where they show up at in books of the Bible. Um, whatever book of the Bible stresses that word or uses that word more often, it'll bring up the word in there. And here, you can go to the front of the Bible and look up the strong word and look it up in alphabetical order and to see what it is. I love that. I wish I'll be glad when they do that with this one. Here you have to you have to look for the word and find it in the book of the Bible where it's located. Okay. But still this here is the most exhaustive between the two. Okay. And I might have shared some of this on another video that I did. But in closing, if you are New King James, again, one more time, if you are getting into the New King James, because I'm finding out there's more New King James readers than I thought, y'all just don't like to expose yourselves. Come on out, because there ain't nothing to be ashamed about, okay? This should be your first Bible. This should be your first Bible if you are New King James, because you will find out from this being your first Bible that there's nothing wrong with your New King James. It is beautiful. And the work that the translators did, they've done the best. And it is one of the best Bibles that you can have. And along with this study edition that goes with it by Nelson, they also did a good job, a good exhaustive job on this. And this is one of the best ways to study. Okay. So, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment and give me something else to talk about, and I will do so just for you. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.